Welcome along guys, welcome back to the garage. I hope you're all safe and sound and looking after yourself and loved ones in these strange times we're currently facing. So a little while ago now, what seems like an age ago, I spoke about doing the Hypermotard rebuild, a freshen up of it, a, a revamp, a clean up, a restoration, whatever you want to call it. Well, being stuck indoors <laughs> is the perfect time to work on your motorcycle. It ain't gonna stop me working on a motorcycle. So this is the start of my Hypermotard rebuild, restoration, make it better series. Roll the intro. Okay, so before we start taking things apart, let's just have a little quick walk around of the actual bike and show you the things I want to concentrate on, what the objectives are from this rebuild. Let's take it outside. There's not really a great deal wrong with it, in all honesty. The, the main things and the whole reason I want to do this job is because of the p engine paint. If you look closely, or even not so closely, there's quite a lot of paint flaking on the, on the casings and especially on the actual engine. It's quite a common thing, apparently, with Ducatis of this age. And it, it really brings down the whole overall feel and, and of the whole bike. So as part of this rebuild, we're gonna take the engine out of the frame, repaint it, get these casings uh, probably keracoated, coated, that fancy coating which is done. Basically strip the whole bike down and go through the whole bike Anything which is a little bit tatty. I mean, there's some of the bolts and stuff are a little bit tatty. So go through the whole bike, refresh everything. The paint's starting to flake a little bit on the Olin spring. So I may get their suspension sent off to be refreshed. You, you can see on the heads here, that it's a little, looking a little bit tired. It's not too bad on the heads. And this side of the engine isn't quite as bad again. You can see the, the paint again missing on the rear part of the engine here. The casings this side aren't too bad, but we'll get all those redone as well. But just get the whole thing looking beautiful again. Even more beautiful. The actual bodywork is in really good condition. The frame's in really good condition. The subframe's in really good condition. But I want to take it all down, see what I find underneath the seat, you know, underneath the tank. What's the overall condition of the bike going to be like? What can I do to improve it? It's, this is the aims we have here. My bike has got the steering damper, the optional Ducati steering damper, which is quite nice, the performance parts. And a lot of people saying in my vid, why am I not running any mirrors? Well, it has got mirrors. The mirrors are here and they fold out of the end of the handguards, which is a really neat touch on this bike. And you can actually see something out of them. They've got some movement here. You adjust that and you can loosen that and that moves. I've actually broken. <laughs> I've broken this side, leaning the bike against the wall. It was cracked anyway, and I'd glued it. So I'm probably gonna replace these with carbon. Keep the same guards, but a carbon piece. Probably get a carbon piece for the, for the tank cover here as well. Maybe even a nice seat cover, because one thing about these bikes, they've got a very, very comfortable seat, but it doesn't look the sexiest. So I'll see if I can get some sort of custom seat cover done. Probably change the gearing slightly. It's quite tall geared. It will do like 130, no problem at all. And you don't need that, doesn't need to be that high geared. So I'm probably gonna look at the gearing, change that, new chain of sprockets, new tires, currently running mismatched tires, which I hate the feel of. I actually had a massive moment on the front end on this. Um, so I definitely wanna change the tires. Tail tidy is huge on these as well. I don't know what can be done with the tail tidy because you've got to think about the exhaust, perhaps some different indicators. Go LED on the indicators. It's got the full termy on it. I may cut it down, it's quite long. I may just take a couple of inches out of it just to bring it in a little bit. Take off the rear foot pegs, get the whole exhaust system polished probably as well. As you can see, quite a lot of plans for this bike. But just where does the project take me? I mean, we could be indoors for the next three months. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to have plenty of time to do this. So if anyone's got any suggestions of stuff I should be looking at buying, mods to make, upgrades to make, even you know, reliability type upgrades as well, stuff to change which is recommended, you know, electrical changes, wiring changes, airbox changes, upgrades. I'm interested to hear all of it. Brembo's up front, carbon pieces. This is the S version, so you get a few carbon bits standard on this. But this is completely stock. I want to fit a quick shifter of some description, probably the Heeltech quick shifter, because the gear linkage is so short, you actually won't get a Translogic one on there. It's, it's too short a gear linkage to fit the Translogic 
uh, switch. So it's probably the heel tech quick shifter as well. Maybe the also the heel tech uh, gear indicator. <laughs> oh, I've got plans. I've got plans. One thing I did notice with this bike, and I was a little bit worried when I got this, it had a lot of milk in the display here. And if it had been a water cooled bike, I would have been worried that the head gasket is gone. But because it's air cooled, I thought, well, there can't be any water in the engine. And it was just from condensation. This bike's only got five and a half thousand miles on it. And I think the previous owner had just started it in the garage and sort of turned it off and never warmed it up properly, which causes a big issue with bikes if you're storing it. If you're just running them up at home, you know, say you're starting it every week and it's not actually riding it, you get a lot of condensation build up in the engine and all of the sludge was just related to that type of starting and turning off without running it. I went for a good run and actually sort of melted, say melted, dissolved all of that sludge. But that's now mixed in with the oil. So as part of this, obviously I'm going to do a full oil change, check all the valve clearances. I'm probably going to end up having to change the belts because I'm going to paint the engine. I'm not stripping the engine down completely. I'm going to take the casings off, get them Cerakoted, but I'm just going to sand down and paint the main body of the engine. I'm not stripping the whole engine down and separating crankcases and stuff. I'm not going quite that far, but when it's done, it should look bloody lovely. But this is just a video record of how it looks before I start. Okay, so what we do before I start, I'm gonna drain the oil on the bike because once the engine's out, I need to be able to drain the oil. I don't wanna drain the oil. Uh, oh yeah, because I'm gonna be taking the casings off the bike. I'm obviously gonna to have to have drain the oil from it. So I'm gonna do it now while the engine's in the bike. Obviously I wanna warm the bike up a little bit before I drain the oil anyway. So let's start it up, warm it up and drop that oil out. Come on, baby. Well, that's it, that's the bike warm. That's probably the last time that bike's gonna be started for a few months now until we're done. So let's get that oil out. Oh, lovely. Looking at the drain plug, it's got a magnet on the end. It's actually pretty good. There's not really any metal filaments on the, on the magnet. So it looks like it could be pretty darn good. First good sign anyway. So drain plug cleaned up, bit of brake cleaner, cleaned all the old oil off that. So I'm gonna refit that now. Forget about the oil, must make a note. Refill the oil before I try and start the bike at the end of this. <laughs> right, let's get on the stand. The state of that, I think I'll be replacing that one. The other one is really hard to get out. It looks like this one is completely minced as well. This is the trouble working on older bikes. You are undoing other people's bodges. The reason I'm taking these footrests off is to fit these, which is the ABBA stand um, swinging arm removal adapters. Normally the ABBA stand mounts to the swinging arm pivot, but to get the engine out on this bike, you've got to take the, uh, the swinging arm off, well, the, uh, the bolt out of the swinging arm. So I'm putting on these adapters so you can use the ABBA stand if you're removing the swinging arm. I don't know if this is going to work. This is what we're going to find out. So I had to move the ABBA adapters to the top position because it's too low at the bottom position. This thing sits too high. But I just thought with, that is more or less over the line with the, the central swinging arm pivot bolt. So I'm not going to be able to actually pull that shaft out to remove the swinging arm when it's on the stand anyway. So I think I'm really going to have to buy myself a set of paddock stands, well, a rear paddock stand at least, to support the back of the bike. It makes it really difficult now. I think I'm just going to start stripping everything off, get as much weight off, off the bike as possible. I've also, while the bike was on the ground, I've loosened the rear wheel nut. So I can take the rear wheel off now, because that that's a huge, I think it's 46 mil. Took two of us to try and get that undone. So if I'm never going to do that while it's on the stand. So I've loosened the back wheel, we need to get the back wheel out. With the bar, with the Aberstand stands on, that's not going to slide out. So 
I'm not going to be able to remove the swinging arm spindle with the bike on the abba stand and also this anyway this whole this whole mechanism here this whole footrest is attached to the bottom of the engine anyway so if the stand's holding up with this footrest i can't move the engine because it's been supported by the engine so i'm gonna have to rethink how i'm gonna jack the bike up to be able to remove the engine ah oh, i'm a noob at this i may need some advice here guys There we go, she's on the stand. So I'm gonna to have to rethink how I do this, as I mentioned. What I've decided, what I think I'm gonna do is rather than take the engine out of the bike, I'm gonna take the bike off of the engine. <laughs> Just remove everything, you know, and take the frame off, leave the swinging arm connected. And then maybe, well actually once I've got it down to just an engine, I can just drop it down and just take it off anyway, can't I? Because it's going to be relatively light. So yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. It's going to be a messy way of doing it, but I want to take it all apart anyway. You know, so why not <laughs> take the bike off of the engine? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave this episode here because of part of my being bored during the lockdown, I've ordered some new garage floor paint, some epoxy resin floor paint. So I'm gonna do that before I start removing everything off this so I've got some room, because everything's gonna come, up, come out of the garage to clear the floor, to paint the floor. So let's leave this here until I get my floor painted. I've also gone for some fancy LED lights around the bottom here, so. <laughs> Please, somebody kill my internet connection before I spend all of my money on shite. <laughs> but yeah, so the garage is getting a bit of an overhaul. We'll be back to this bike once the garage floor is painted, hopefully only a week or so. But leave comments, leave suggestions on things you think I should do. I'm not a mechanic. I'm just to do it all Charlie. I'll have a go, Charlie, even. So I'm no expert here. So I'm going to need some help. And this is what's going to be the beauty of this. It's going to be a bit of a two-way thing. I know it's YouTube, you're watching the video, but your comments are going to help me to get through this project because I don't really know what I'm doing. So all you Ducati experts, all you mechanics out there, all you people who've done this sort of thing before, let me know the best way to tackle this. But I think my plan to remove the bike from the engine is probably the right way to go here. Let me know what you think, guys. Thanks for your help in advance. Thank you.